doing meditations now at Stanford, um, either on my phone <coughs> or on an iPad or on a computer um, since mid-March, since the, about the second week of March. And um, I do find that of all the things like teachable um, online, meditation is probably the easiest. Um, you don't need that much of a connection with somebody to tell them to close their eyes. And, and I like that. Um, the first, the first class that I put online was the meditation class. Um, and that's, it's actually quite simple. The, the challenge of teaching a meditation class is in the consumer, not the teacher because um, the average person attending is usually distracted. And they don't even know how distracted they are because we're all so distracted um, with our technology that I'm not even sure we have much of a sense to the degree that we can't focus. Um, so the, the problem usually with teaching meditation is, is almost always to get people in the audience to, to pay attention. And it, it's, an inter it's just an interesting thing because we're, we're all in this kind of addictive space of multitasking. And, and it's, it, at least you know, for everyone, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge to release that um, I, I don't know what the word is, is outward both fear and craving. Like human beings have a tremendous fear that they're going to be left behind, that they're not going to get something, they're going to be hurt. And then they have a craving for new experience, for excitement, for um, things to feed themselves. And what they have shown is technology, and particularly cell phones, tap into both of those kind of systems, the both fear and craving. So it's really hard to shut that down. It, it, you know, we have some, I mean, again, when you speak into big kids, like in, in college, um, you know, it can, uh, certainly the first class of any meditation class like 20 minutes of the class is getting them to just stop doing something else. <laughs> and, and it takes exhortations and threats and entertainment. And it, it even takes, I, I've told students that, and this has nothing to do with this half hour, but I've told students that if you don't want to spend one hour a week not connected to the outside world, don't take the class. Like, that's it. That's, that's like the only, and we make them um, put on their cameras so we can watch them to make sure, you know, that they're actually doing what you ask them to do. Because, um, you know, the intro to meditation is always, this is really hard to do. Like most of us, unless you've had a long practice with meditation, you don't fully recognize how difficult it is. That you, you don't fully recognize how incredibly pulled by both anxiety and craving we are all the time. So we're always pulled to get more from the outside, to resist the things that threaten us, to scan for problems, to scan for things to crave, what makes meditation so unbelievably difficult is you're quieting that down. You're, you're actually making a statement for a few moments that I'm okay just inside of me, just here, just now, just with whatever. And, and that is one of the most frightening things for human beings to do. You know, there are those... There's those wonderful um, 
I, I don't know, experiments done. Well, I mean, wonderful may not be the right word because that is a, that's a challenging word to describe this, but um, wonderful being that they've given people, they would sit them in blank rooms with no stimulation. And the only thing they could do would be to give themselves an electric shock for like entertainment. And they showed that about 30 to 40% of people chose to give themselves electric shocks rather than just sitting still in a room with no stimulation. Like just a white room for 15 minutes with nothing in it. They, they you know, they would rather shock themselves than sit there and, and experience nothing. So, um, you know, John Cabot Zinn program, which is the most famous by far meditation program, the, you know, the stress management program, his program regularly has about a 50% dropout rate because people really struggle to quiet down and sit still. And they really struggle to do one thing. The problem with doing one thing and, and the hard part about meditation in its deepest sense is that when you do one thing, you end up being with yourself. And it scares the shit out of people what they see, which is why we're all so distracted and so busy and so like moving all the time because we don't want to go through that anxiety place where you have to see who you are without disguise to be able to go under that. But when you meet it, it's like, wow, is it really possible that this is what my mind does and this is where it goes and this is what I think and this is who I am? This is horrifying. Most people who begin meditation practice basically say there's something wrong with the techniques because once I start to practice them, my mind is all over the place. So the techniques must be broken. <laughs> because, you know, oh my God, look at what happens. I realize I'm a mental mess. It's got to be a problem with the technique. That is the universal beginning. And in fact, when psychologists <laughs> excuse me, first started to teach meditation back in the 80s, they found that somewhere between a third and a half of people became more anxious practicing rather than less anxious because they hadn't learned yet how to frame it. They hadn't learned how to do the proper induction, the proper, well, this is what you're going to see and this is what's going to happen and here's the instruction because people became anxious because they saw they dipped their toe in how incredibly anxious they always are. And they recoiled from that. So when I, when I ask my college students to put away your phones when we start meditating and turn off every other conceivable device that you have, your watch, your toes, your, your whatever it is that is impinging upon you and shut off all the other windows you have in your computer so this is it, people get anxious because they realize that their first antidote to seeing themselves clearly has just been breached. Their momentary anxiety reduction practice of, well, I feel the slightest degree of uncomfort, so I'm going to check something else. I'm seeing myself clearly. Well, we can't do that. I have to glaze over by reading an email. So when you ask people to actually just sit still, it's hard. Meditation is no no easy thing and um, I don't think any of the real practitioners pretend that it is because what it does is ask us to very slowly transfer trust from outside to inside very slowly 
to transfer what it is that we trust will be our support from outside things, um, doing, um, possessions, whatever it is, activities, to more inward, like states of being, quiet, trust. It's a long process to get there. It's a long process. And in its truest form, meditation was not meant to manage stress. It does that sometimes in some people very well, but it's not meant for that. It's meant to disentangle our intention from all the outside stimulation so we can start attending inside. And when you start attending inside, it can be very hard work to practice focus, to be honest with ourselves who we are, to challenge some of our ways of thinking. Those are all really, like, not easy things. So, anyway, when you start meditation, it's very simple. Very, very, very simple. It's basically get comfortable. Relax and try to center. Even that is sufficient to take us a long way. So the meditation begins with get comfortable, relax, and center. And center means literally center. Bring your attention to the center of your body. And then allow your eyes to close. And if you, if you keep your attention or bring your attention really to your center, like to, to a point maybe an inch below your navel, and you relax distractions, And just see if in a gentle way you can be in your own center, whatever that might mean, but just that's where your attention is. And then if you can couple that with really gentling your breathing. Making your breathing as soft and as gentle and as peaceful as you can from your center.
So the, just the last simple instruction is when you inhale, and it's gentle and soft and centered, make sure or try to relax your body enough so that when you inhale, your belly naturally gets bigger because you're not holding any tension. Like that, that the natural movement of your body is expanding your abdomen when you inhale and contracting it when you exhale. And then if there's any, if there's just any simple focus, it's in your center, in your lower abdomen. Can I be gentle? Like when I breathe in, can I be gentle and soft? And when I breathe out, can I be gentle and soft? Just soft and gentle and quiet. And then we're just going to draw this period to a close by one or two more short breaths and then gently allowing your eyes to open. 
But what's nice is to, when you open your eyes, just see if you can, like, not fidget. Just see if you can sit still, gently. You know, a lot of the beginning practices of meditation, um, the, the, the key elements are just trying to sustain attention, like just, just focus on one thing and just seeing if you can stay relaxed. And, and those are huge. I mean, just, <clears throat> even if we can legitimately relax for a few minutes, just that's restorative. Like letting go of worry, but even more than letting go of worry, letting go of hurrying. You know, letting go of multitasking, even again, three, four minutes of that is healing. Um, you know, not being in the future for just a couple of minutes. I mean, it, I, I, I get no sense that meditation is designed to be mastered easily. And that, that it's either a one lifetime or multi-lifetime practice. That it's like, you know, this is the, this is the hardest stuff that people do is is transcending their fear and their wandering mind and their um grasping at everything that comes near them just centering and quieting down over time slowly reduces that stuff but it's not quick so so this there's no hurry it's not like you're gonna I don't know, you know, not going to be a Zen master quickly. <laughs> it's, you may never be a Zen master, but you could be 5% calmer and that would be fantastic. Um, but, but, I mean, you don't want to have like ridiculous goals. Like if, if literally, if you have just as a goal that I, I'm going to sit still, reasonably and relax that's huge like i'm really gonna relax i'm not gonna have that fevered need to do three things and i'm not gonna be so fear motivated that i have to always be like making sure i'm taking care of something else even if it's just in my mind so just getting to relaxation is a real nice accomplishment. And then if you can, even on top of relaxation, even if just for a few moments, you can simply pay attention to one thing. That, that, these, are, these are high level skills. You know, there's no, I mean, on, only the most BS of, of meditation and spiritual practitioners tell you it's easy or that you're going to get it quickly or you know you have the, we have the entire history of evolution battling us in our fight for survival and fear so you know this this ain't going away in any in any in any um, time that i can see but the regularity of practice matters so that you keep on um, slightly training ourselves to sit still, do one thing, and relax, and, and relax, and, and relax. Let me just lead through one more meditation before I, I stop. Again, if everybody would please, this time, close your eyes and sit in a somewhat straight position. I'm not, 
I don't mean you have to be like uncomfortable, but not fall asleep position or just, you know, semi straight. Allow your eyes to close. And, and like remind yourself or ask yourself, like, don't I feel safe enough and loved enough and affluent enough to take five minutes out from worrying? Like, isn't my life good enough right now that I can simply relax and let go? Like you want to, you want to start with a cognitive um, permission. Like, yeah, very likely I'm not going to be blown up in the next five minutes. There's probably food and water if I need it. Like, I'm okay. But you, you need to start with your mind reminding you how okay you are. that I'm fine. I'm not perfect, but I'm fine. And that starts the process of quieting down. And it will tend to help you relax your shoulders where what you want is your shoulders not being tight or pushed upward. You want your shoulders to be soft and that allows your belly to expand when your shoulders are soft. Because you don't want to breathe anywhere near your shoulders. You want to breathe into your belly and you don't want tight shoulders to get in the way. So you want soft, gentle shoulders, relaxed arms. Again, you're not going anywhere. And the, the quieter, gentler your shoulders are, the easier it is for your inhales to go fully into your abdomen. And very gently move your abdomen outward for the inhale, downward for the exhale. And then what I'd like is to just practice for a couple of minutes, one of Thich Nhat Hanh's just simplest meditation practice, which is when you inhale, you say to yourself, I am. And when you exhale, at peace. It's a very simple, non-denominational focus. So you inhale, I am belly rises, exhale at peace. And if you can almost feel the words in your belly, it helps strengthen that. Like you're doing this from your center. I am at peace.
And then again, just one or two more breaths into and out of your belly before you again gently allow your eyes to open. So I, I did two um, like 10 minute meditation practices. Um, from what I understand, I think it takes somewhere around, give or take about eight minutes for most people to get some meditation effect that um, the autonomic nervous system disengages the stress response somewhere between 6 and 15 seconds. Then um, the quieting. But to build any kind of practice, it takes somewhere about 8 to 10 minutes a day for the most rudimentary practice. Um, but real deep changes from meditation require a lot of practice. And so, we, we, you know, each of us has to choose what we want from it. So there will be changes if, if you meditate every day for 10 minutes. You will change brain function a little bit. But if you want deeper changes or more long-lasting changes, you may have to meditate a half hour or 45 minutes a day. But if you want profound changes, you have to you know, go on retreats and, and meditate for long periods of time. But um, the, the, the bottom line is, at least from what I understand, to have influence on our nature requires daily practice. Like that's the, that's the key piece of any of this is, has to be practiced with regularity and it has to be practiced with some degree of attention. You know, that, that there just is benefit from re reducing stimulation, bringing attention inward, and choosing where that attention is focused. And then choosing when our minds go everywhere else to either examine where our minds go or choose to bring them back. Th those practices simply have benefit for the human mind. Um, you know, the last thing that, that I will say is the, the really nice thing about meditation research is that it shows that even small amount of practice slightly reduce our capacity to see differences between people that the biological um, fear mechanism coupled with almost all cultures tribal fear mechanism makes us very leery of people who are different than we are and who might threaten us so we're almost always primed to anxiety around differences and one of the benefits of even a short period of meditation is they've shown even on brain scans that that dims a little bit. That we're a little less jumpy around, you know, you're blonde, I'm not, you know, you live here, I don't, you know, you go to Stanford, I go to Cal, whatever it is. We are so primed to fear-based and tribal differences that one of, one of the most immediate benefits of meditation is to quiet that down a little, which um, 
you know, to me is just a wonderful thing. Anyway, I do have to go. Um, thank you, Amy, for inviting me to yak again in front.